The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and at amazon.com. Julie, you're having difficulty with anger? Yes. Um, I have, like, an anger problem. I yell at my boyfriend a lot. Even if it's, like, a little argument, I yell, and I have a bad attitude. I get real frustrated real easily. I don't. I need to know how to make myself calm down and if I need to maybe get on medicine or... Okay, There's, before you get some to answers, the, uh, <laughs> I've got a, a few questions. What can you give me an example recently of of something he said or did that triggered your anger towards him? Oh, I don't know. I can't think of anything, but you know, um, like you the they way. were arguing, and it could be over anything little. Okay, I, give me I a think, little thing. The thing with my boyfriend, this is what he does. We'll argue about something, and he'll ask about it and then ask again or ask constantly, like, more questions and this and this, and he keeps going, and he doesn't drop it. He just keeps going and going, and I think it makes me yell. I can give you better advice if you give me an example. For example, we didn't know what restaurant to go to, or he wanted to know what I did with the paycheck, and I told him, you know, what is it? Give me an example. Okay, well... Say I lost something of his, or okay. I didn't what did throw you something lose? away. Yeah, give me the visual. I want to be able to see it. Okay. Say I didn't clean the bedroom. Okay. He would be like, well, why didn't you clean the bedroom? And or, you would say what? I don't know. Or I didn't well, have what do, time. What do you mean you didn't have time? It doesn't take that long to do it. Why didn't you do it? And I would, would probably say, I don't know. And then he'll just keep going and going and going and going. Yeah, and but like, you, why didn't, what, do you, what do you mean you don't know? How can you say you don't know when you know what you did during the day? Why couldn't you have picked up, you, you left your clothes all over the place. You said you were going to make the bed. You didn't make the bed. Why didn't you do it? You sound exactly like him. <laughs> so, so, and then I yell. Okay, so here. he doesn't stop. Can you notice, can, you, can we flip it? Can I... Can, let's say that you're having company over and you ask him to clean the bedroom and he says, yeah, I'll clean it. Now ask me the questions. I'm, I am now the boyfriend in charge of cleaning the bedroom. You come home and you see that the bedroom is not cleaned when I had promised that I would mm-hmm. clean the bedroom. What are you going to say to me? You're the boyfriend. You're, you're now in the position of having, you're expecting it to be clean and it's a mess. So what do you okay. say? I would just say, um, baby said you were going to clean the bedroom. Why isn't it clean? I don't know. What's your gut response? So maybe he keeps asking me questions because I keep saying I don't know. But the problem is I don't know what to say. Okay, you're vague, aren't you? It, the problem is, is that if you give him a vague response, it sounds like you're brushing him off. And that's why he persists. He wants an answer. Now let me give you a con- contrast, Julie. Let's say that you say to him, Hey, I got to interrupt this because we've got to pay some bills. 30 seconds, that's it. A very quick ad and then Alan will be back. Romance. Oh, I wish guys knew more about what we want from a relationship. <laughs> Boy, I wish I knew more about what I want. Where's that ad I saw? Ah, uh, here it is. The Selfish Path to Romance. A serious romance guidebook. Download Chapter 1 for free at SelfishRomance.com and buy it at Amazon.com. Hmm, the selfish path to romance. That is interesting. The problem is, is that if you give him a vague response, it sounds like you're brushing him off. And that's why he persists. He wants an answer. Now let me give you a contrast, Julie. Let's say that you say to him... Uh, or let's say that your boyfriend, ask, I'll be the boyfriend again, and ask me the question, why didn't I clean the bedroom? Mm-hmm. Um, why didn't you clean the, be- the bedroom before I got home? You know, I had planned to. I know I promised that I would clean the bedroom. And then I started watching the TV program. I was watching the Patriots and the Giants game, or I was watching <laughs> something. And I completely forgot about it. I am so sorry. How do you feel now? Okay. What if I, what if I do answer him like that and I don't say I don't know, and then what if he just keeps going? So, well, like, well, what do you say to that? <laughs> okay, well, well, push me. I'm him, and I didn't um, do it. Well, you said you were going to. Why didn't you do it? You, you could have. You knew that it had to be done. You know what? It sounds like you're really frustrated with me. 
<laughs> what happened? I'm naming what I'm hearing from him. It, you're feeling frustrated. When I name it, does that make you feel worse or better? Probably better. Interesting. So when you validate, when you name where he's at, when you recognize another person's emotional state, it doesn't mean that you agree with them, but you recognize it. It diffuses the situation. They feel heard. They feel listened to, so they don't have to play the broken record and keep asking, hammering you with the same question over and over again. Is that making so I, sense? I, I just need to make sure that I don't say I don't know. You need to more yes. problems. I don't know is a killer. You don't you don't want to be vague. Be honest with yourself. Ask yourself the question. Well, why didn't I clean the bedroom? Well, because I'm angry with you. You said we'd have rom- you said we'd have an intimate moment this afternoon and you didn't even touch me and I'm angry with you so I didn't clean the bedroom. If you can be honest with him even about the difficult stuff, you'll have a much healthier relationship because then you're not putting pressure on one another to play mental guessing games to wonder what each other's doing and people always assume typically assume the worst with anger itself anger is the emotion that says it's not fair it's not fair and so um you know it's it's you're saying it's not fair you keep asking me questions but he's also saying to you it's not fair you're not answering my questions so both of you end up being mutually frustrated with one another and it doesn't lead to a good relationship so the alternative is just one of the there are many different skills there's a book uh dr weisinger's anger workout book there are many different little workbooks you can get that can give you a whole bunch of skills today we talked about how to act on this phone call how to actively listen to him and name his emotion and not to be vague to tell him instead of the i don't knows which is really a brush off you tell him what's actually going on julie so i hope that helps and here's a little more from dr kenner smell my hands i'm just so proud i had to stop for gas and i pumped it myself it's part of a new kick i'm on which is what i'm learning to be handy i depend too much on other people so i'm doing it myself feel that tell me that's not the start of a first rate callus i got my first work shirt this morning and tonight i'm tackling the squeaky hasp on my cigar humidor and that's from Fraser, and that's Niles, obviously. And he pumped his own gas by himself, and he's building up those calluses. And think in your own life of things that you don't do, that you're perfectly capable of doing, and that by not doing them, you feel inadequate on some level. Like some people say, well, you know, my husband always balances the checkbook, and I wouldn't know where to even begin. Or, you know, something, I wouldn't know what to do, how to change a tire if I ever had to. And occasionally, give yourself the opportunity to say, no, even though I can delegate this particular task, such as balancing the checkbook, this time I want to do it myself because I want to know that I'm capable of doing it myself. It's your policy towards your own mind. Can I, can I do this or not? Rather than saying, oh, it's just not me to balance a checkbook or it's just not me to change a tire. I remember once being stuck in the rain and no phones in sight and what this was pre-cell phone era and I had to change my own tire and after I did that I felt like I could conquer the world now that sounds ridiculous you can't you know it's just changing a tire but it was my attitude it was like I can figure this out I know I'm stranded out here it's pouring rain and I've got a car I haven't the foggiest idea of how to change a tire but I learned about lug nuts I learned how to use my body weight to get the lug nuts off and how to change the tire and so you want to use your mind well to pursue your values and to when you get when you hit a roadblock where you just say to yourself oh it's just not me if it's something that's unimportant then it doesn't have to be you but if it's something that is important and you're drawing the conclusion that your mind is somehow inferior then take the opportunity to do that thing and to show yourself that it can be you for more dr kenner podcast go to drkenner.com and please listen to this ad Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner and co-author Dr. Edwin Locke, who's world famous for his theories in goal setting. A good antidote to reckless spending is to ask the following questions before buying anything, especially the big ticket items. What is the real reason I or we want this? Is it to show off? or because it's a real value to me and my family. Would I even want this if no one other than my partner knew that I had it? 
Did I choose it using my own judgment or just because others said it was desirable? Is this the best possible use for this money? Is there something that would be more valuable to us in the long run, like putting it in investments or savings? You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com and buy it at amazon.com.